Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel, wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice sunny Sunday morning over here from Dubai. Got a good night's sleep and ate some uh, good old food as well. So I'm ready to go for some more long-term analysis today. We'll also cover the short-term time frame as well, kind of what to expect in the next you know, 24 to 48 hours, and then focus on what this last week's of price action really means for the next um, you know, few weeks, maybe even into the mid to late portion of March. Uh, and what that essentially means for the greater term time frame picture. So with that in mind, if you think that this content might be uh, valuable to your life, consider maybe liking and herping the dirt button over there. No, man, it's all good. There's nothing uh, there. It's it, Look, if you're going to like the video, like the video. If you're going to subscribe, subscribe. Either which way, man, I'm going to continue to create this content, which <laughs> who, know, who knows where this one goes. So I need to make sure that I have all my notes over here. This probably won't be as in-depth as we typically do on a Sunday, simply because, you know, I'm kind of away from like my very comfortable uh, battle station. But uh, as you can see, given the, given the nice face cam right there, nice. Very nice. Um, but uh, but we'll start off right here on the shorter term time frames. So I'm going to go into CME and, uh, whoops, giving away some of my cards right there. But more importantly, CME on Friday did close at about 40,640. So currently Bitcoin trading almost a thousand bucks above that right now. I do expect Bitcoin to come back down, fill that gap, scare the ever living shit out of everyone as people say, oh my God, it's a bull trap. We're coming back down now. Look, <laughs> Elsa's laughing in the background. You can probably hear that. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is that, uh, look, after a move like this, especially on volume and on rising volatility that we did see over here off the lows, you know, very, very likely to get continuation amongst many other things as well. So going back into it right now, whilst I do, uh, whilst I would essentially expect a bit of a pullback to open up the week, uh, whether it be in the next 24 or 48 hours, you know, between now and basically late Monday or around US open on Monday, um, I do think that that is essentially just going to be another higher low on the shorter term timeframes and generally continuation on the higher term timeframes. Uh, the only way that I'd invalidate this and look at this as a bull trap, which I don't think that that's what's happening, but as always, you need to have a point for failure because nothing is guaranteed in uh, technical analysis land. It's also why you can't actually predict things. It's all about statistics and probabilities to answer some very interesting questions. Uh, you know, that is essentially uh, my view on price action. As long as Bitcoin's above 39,000 bucks, below 39,000 bucks on a medium time frame closure, yeah. We can talk, talk about this as your next bull trap, but in this case right here, it does look like Bitcoin has a nice low for now. You don't see that Bitcoin's essentially filled the gap that we saw on that gap down move from 20th of January, right in the uh, you know mid $41,000 territory, which which is where spot is right now. So. So when that happens, you know, where do I expect things to kind of pull back down to? Well, let's go over here to spot price action. Let's throw on our nice little tools and throw on these babies as well. And anywhere between basically uh, where CME closed at about 40 and a half thousand uh, and perhaps even as far down as 40,000 even is fair game. Like I said, I'd only really invalidate this with a medium term time frame closure below about 39, just above 39,000 bucks in this case. Anyways, uh, also in line with that, we do see on the shorter term time frames, if I can populate them over here. Yeah, four hours still cast momentum is uh is you know it's rather cooked up right here as you can see cooked up not coked up dubai people um but uh you can see that it, it actually will turn down with any sort of a closure below forty one thousand five forty. it's not like a death sense or anything like that but you know likely a pullback along with the very high volatility signals as you can see right here on hvp and if we go over here into our bbwp which i like a little bit better we actually already see it curling down and playing below that moving average after hitting extremes so you know a bit of a contraction likely into a higher low is you know essentially what i'm looking for right there whether that happens you know today Today uh, around CME open or tomorrow around US open, I don't really have a strong proclivity towards, but either which one is fine. I imagine other lower term timeframes are kind of on the same side here as well. Let's just go double check to ensure that. If we can load it, that'd be good. Yeah, two hours coming down below 41,750. Actually, do you want to check the three hour today? And the three hour is doing what? It's loading as always. And yeah, that one's going to be turning down below 41,8. Hourly, I imagine, is flippy floppy, which is also turning down below 41,650. And six hour, which I actually really, really like recently as well, is doing what? Is loading again too. Yeah, it's going to freshly turn down below 41,630. So again, short term, very likely a pullback. Uh, sometime within this next uh, 24 to 48 hours and um, can play all the way back down to even $40,000 base. Um, and uh, while I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, coming back down below 40000 bucks is a good sign, I would not invalidate this as a more medium and long-term continuation play until Bitcoin really closes at minimum medium-term time frame, preferably a higher term time frame below about just over 39000 bucks. Okay, cool. So we got that. We got that. We got that. Should I talk about low-term time frame ranges right here? Eh. 
no, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's quite necessary right now. I think that we've gotten that uh, well enough. Okay, so let's now talk about um, the relevancy of what happened, uh, especially on Friday, uh, playing off this nice low right here. Which over the past couple of weeks we've been saying, hey, look, you know, yeah, Bitcoin doesn't necessarily look, uh, or, or sorry, Bitcoin more or less, regardless of whether I'm super bearish or super bullish, very likely bounces above 40, probably into the mid 40s before, if it is even going to at all, going below uh, our current lows, maybe down to like 29 to 30 thousand dollar base. So why or, or or what sort of reasons now uh, fit within that sort of um, narrative? Well. I wouldn't say that this is first and foremost, but we'll start off here on the five-day Gaussian channel, something that we called out about a week and a half ago as it bounced off the bottom side of this. And typically when we see it bounce off the bottom side of it, we do want to see a return somewhere back around the median band, which is actually at around 46,450 or so. It will start to flatline probably on the next closure, but that's not coming in for another three trading days. So until then, you know, I do expect Bitcoin to trade essentially sideways and up from this region on the higher term timeframes. Uh, on top of that, let's also go through this one as well. This one's actually rather powerful. Is it on this chart that I have? Yeah, it is on this chart. Let's go over here to a daily. Uh, we did see a daily closure specifically above the 382. Uh, let me actually get rid of this right now. Yes, that will be relevant later, but uh, getting, giving away some of my cards here, but we'll just... It's like it never happened. <laughs> there we go. And there we go. Too many drawings over here. Uh, but closing above the 382 Fibonacci retracement right there off of the macro retracement is actually rather important because it does imply that we're very likely to see a further corrective move, at least a corrective move, probably somewhere around the 0.5, maybe even as much as the 618. The problem with this long term, however, is that as, low, as long as we're below the 618, that is technically still still opening up the possibilities for a more long-term bull trap here's where i really want to diverge and differentiate content on this channel from what i'm seeing on a lot of other channels first and foremost is not a fucking short squeeze holy shit i i can't imagine how many times i've seen this uh, if someone's calling this short squeeze, they, uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to finish that sentence, but basically, look, you can't squeeze shorts in an overall downtrend. You will get shorts covering and you will get shorts uh, taking profit here, which they very likely are. The only shorts that are getting squeezed are the extremely, extremely uh, noob retailers who are way too over leveraged shorting after a 50% drop down. That's, those are not the people who move the market. Just just an opinion. Anyways, um, in this case right here, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, shorts closing does produce a bit of an upside move. And more importantly, you know how you can know immediately how this is not a short squeeze? <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself, but I need to talk about this right now. Uh, where's the open interest? Open interest is heading up. Who's, if you're getting squeezed and forced out of your position, how would open interest be going up? Huh, that's weird. That's real fucking weird. What about the liquidations? Hey, uh, there seems to be minimum amounts of liquidations here. That's strange. Very strange. So yeah, people talking about a short squeeze. I, I mean, look, press section, I do think very likely goes up from here. Uh, but if they're calling it a short squeeze, I just think that these are people who, they have interesting opinions. Uh, we'll just put it that way. Anyways, I should stop talking about that. That is silliness and I'm probably just inciting bad vibes. So I, will, I apologize. I, should, I shouldn't even mention this shit to begin with. All right, cool. So we spoke about the FIB. Uh, we spoke about the relevancy of it, uh, you know, of it from there. But I would say that above, as long as Bitcoin's below about fifty thousand bucks, which is essentially that last major, major high that we saw over here. Yes, there was one at about forty-four to forty-five thousand bucks right here as well. Uh, but this big one over here. Uh, particularly interesting for the long term. As long as Bitcoin is below there, there is still a potential for a long term move to the downside. I'm not saying that it's destined to happen. It's just a potential and something worth preparing for if we were to see weakness within this region, especially and then Bitcoin come down some specific levels, namely about forty thousand bucks more long term. I don't think that this happens really anytime soon, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, but we will talk about the 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 validation criteria for that a little bit later. Anyways, um, what do we have next? Yes, uh, also on on the side of general continuation here. I want to go over to our higher term time frame uh, stochastic momentum and juxtapose that against a lower term time frame. So this is a five day. Obviously a five day is not going to be really related to a four hour. Like how many fucking four hours are in a five day? I don't even know. <laughs> there's, there, there's six in one day. So six times five uh, is 30. Okay, so there's 30. So uh, you know you get, you get a lot of those before you even get one tick on this chart over here. Anyways, the five day stochastic momentum is still going to remain to the upside as long as Bitcoin is above 35,000 bucks essentially which is you know well well below where we're currently at right now more than a uh, almost a well like a 
a little bit more than a 10% move, 10, 15% 10, move, whatever. Um, anyways, what's also very interesting about this is historically speaking, anytime that we've seen the five day stochastic momentum get down to this green horizontal uh, line here at about 860 or so, um, you know, we have seen, well, three of the four past iterations uh, in Bitcoin's history, going all the way back to the Genesis, act as macro cycle lows. I just need to make sure that I'm recording. Hey, I'm recording. All right, doing well. <laughs> um, three of the four were macro cycle lows. One of them was a phenomenal bull trap that also did have a pretty nice move up to uh, as well. So statistically speaking, you know, decent. Would like to see more iterations, obviously, but not bad. Anyways, I'll start it off over here. So you can see for yourself, obviously, I'm just presenting the information. You make the decisions for yourself as a rational and uh, intelligent adult. And uh, we have this one over here from October 2011. Yes, Bitcoin did come back down around and test around that region. Um, however, and, and it did take, you know, about a month for that to happen. And then even from there, for Bitcoin to really get going, it took about another, you know, uh, year, <laughs> almost another year until like July, June uh, of, uh, of 2012. But ultimately, you know, that was the macro low before going from about 250 all the way to 1200. The next one, uh, as far as macro lows goes, was January 2015. Again, Bitcoin comes back down and retests around that region. But uh, but does not close lower, and more importantly, well, that was the low. Again, took about a year almost for it to really get going to the upside. And then same thing over here in 2018 on the macro cycle low. Let me just adjust this. I'm um, hopefully it can be heard uh, well. I'm just kind of figuring out my own setup right here. Maybe we'll do a live stream tomorrow as well if I can figure this out. Assuming that the internet quality is good as well. But uh, but yeah, we do see uh, this one obviously a 3100 macro cycle low of 2018. Still, it took about three months for Bitcoin to really get going to the upside. Side, but and even retested it, you know, about a year later <laughs> in March 2020 on the flu dump. But yes, that was the macro cycle low. And then once again, we're getting the same signature. I do want to suggest that just because the last or sorry, three of the four have been macro cycle lows doesn't mean it's always going to be that we do have this iteration right here. We do have this iteration right here which uh, was a bull trap. Now, this bull trap did still produce a pretty nice move to the upside, more than 70% move on a wick-to-wick -wick basis, on a closing basis, you know, still pretty decent, almost a 20% move right there. So looking at this right now, um, you know, Bitcoin's moved what off the lows from a wick to where we're at right now basis, uh, almost 30%. So, you know, it is getting going right there. Um, now, I won't, I won't do the measured move for like a 70% move, although, eh, might as well, it's going to be fun. 70% move puts Bitcoin where? At about 55,000 or so. Just just for shits and gigs, I, I guess. Anyways, um, yeah, so we got that. Uh, Two-day stochastic momentum also was one of the big things that we were looking at as you know indicative that Bitcoin is likely going to move into the $40,000 uh, region first before anything else. And we do see that this is going to be remaining with upside posture as long as Bitcoin's above 36,350. And daily is also going to be uh, vertical above about 38,700. And the weekly, which is closing tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time, is going to have a chance. It's probably, uh, well, I imagine it's probably not going to flip to the upside. Uh, on this particular closure, but very, very likely in the following week, this number is uh, extremely likely going to come down from 43,150, probably maybe even below, so maybe even somewhere around 40,000 bucks. And well, the weekly is going to have a chance to do that as well. And the weekly and five day, very, very powerful timeframes for uh, stochastic momentum in particular. On top of that, we also do have on CME specifically, five day, yes, five day hidden bullish divergence. Um, a little bit of phantom diff right there, but ultimately, you know, another thing kind of supporting more continuation of the upside. That is also accompanied by a five-day jewel signal, which has lost its downside curvature. It's turned white, so now we are in the midst of a uh, shift. And well, if that turns up, that would be a really, really great signal as well. Uh, for the more long term. And uh, this would actually still be a corrective signal seeing the way that uh, BBWP is starting to kind of curl down right there a little bit, to be fair. Um, but even the hidden bullish evidence does have a targeted region. Uh, first target would be about 45, second would be about 49 to 50 or so. So even on that, you know, Bitcoin, you play out those moves and uh, it, was, it could still technically be corrective more long term. Um, to take it one step further on the daily over here, we did see, well, we did see regular bullish evidence um, on, or sorry, phantom div on both uh, spot and uh, CME right here. But more importantly, we did see that BBWP worked off the lows alongside a fresh jewel signal uh, on the 3rd of February. By the way, I should let you know that I believe we're going to be taking the jewel light away relatively soon, maybe this week, maybe next week, something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, anyways, I just want to pair people for that. Don't want to get a bunch of uh, mad emails. Um, 
anyways, uh, what else was I going to get on to other than that? Yes, so those are also on the um, on the side of continuation. You know, next targeted region would be same as before, basically uh, somewhere around about forty four uh, and a half to forty five, or sorry, forty four to forty five thousand bucks in line with the not point five Fibonacci retracement right here. That'd be the next sort of area where I'd really be looking for uh, a bit of a pullback. And then I really want to see Bitcoin try for a higher low after that. If I see something like that, probably going to be looking somewhere around upper 40s, low 50s. And that's the real test long term, at least in my opinion. Does this happen anytime soon? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'd I imagine maybe earliest like end of February, which we're already in the second week of February. So fair enough. Anyways, uh, the other thing that is very interesting here for the long term is specifically the monthly accumulation distribution indicator. The reason why this is relevant is that all slope changes on this, especially in the red and green zones, have correlated to um, macro shifts in direction. Uh, you can back this yourself, obviously, but just for example, we do have, or we can start off with this one over here, getting the top in 2013, getting the bottom over here in July 2015, top over here in March 2018, bottom over here in January 2019, top over here in January 2020. This one rather profound just because this was uh, two months or basically a month, month and a half before the flu dump. It actually did say uh, this is not the rally that you're looking for, which is one of the only indicators that I'm aware of that did that. Um, and then we have another bottom right here in May 2020 before going basically to the moon where we're at right now and then turn down uh, in this whole segment over here. Now, this is not a positive, positive slope, obviously. However, we are seeing it massively change its curvature for the first time since July. Um, so that's uh, what, almost six months, uh, somewhere around there. So, so it, it, you know, that would be a little bit more long term hopium. Um, and I think that will do it for that. Then next, we also see over here in our indicators tab on the crown trading application, which obviously you can find this at app.crowntrain.net. We see a couple of things. Uh, first, we see fear and green index working off the lows. We see it um, kind of hanging out within the fearful to extremely fearful zone for about um, two months now. Yeah, about two months in this case, or sorry, a little bit more than two months. Uh, it started in like late November. So let me just work this up in my own head. So December, January, yeah, almost like almost two and a half months now, which is getting very comparable to the time that Bitcoin spent uh, in the very, very fearful zones on the summer lows at $30,000 before going to our current all-time high at $69,000, a very nice number. So in this case, you know, theoretically speaking, if you're, if you're working off of sentiment indicators, which a lot of this, I mean, it's just, you know, a representation of the emotional response to this asset, uh, which certainly does matter. Um, well, you know, you kind of look at that as a bit of a fractured relationship uh, as far as timing goes um, for at least, you know, uh, at least a nice bottom right now. The next big thing I'd like to talk about is the NUPL. The NUPL right here has a nice name, but basically it is what it is, the net unrealized profit and loss. And what's interesting about this? Well, basically when it when it goes low, typically bounce. <laughs> and obviously when it's very, very high, probably going to see some talk, some some profit taking, thus forcing price action down. So in this case, uh, everyone's reaction now and <laughs> And there's there's no more profit to not take. It's only losses. Uh, no, just kidding. But you get what I mean by this. Typically, when it comes down, you know, we are looking at uh, the next move up. And what's also interesting about this is we see a divergence between this low here at 35,000 versus the summer lows at about 30,000, mm -hmm. uh, whilst making lower lows on Nupal. Um, so that I thought that that was rather interesting. Um, anyways, okay, so we got that, we got that, we got that. Nice. All right. So I do think. Um, Oh yeah, and then also talking about the severity of this bounce. Let's go over here to daily BBWP. Uh, so we did see BBWP get as far down as about, let's call it nine percentile or yeah, nine and a half percentile um, before the move to the upside did begin. Now this is not obviously comparable to what we saw on the last major move to the downside in January. Of course, again, volatility is direction neutral after all, measuring the dispersion of returns. But and, and, and again, this one was a nice move to the downside. I mean, 43 to, four, to 33, basically, like a, a pretty significant move. Um, you know, it, it's not going to necessarily be comparable to that, but perhaps uh, more in line with what we saw in December and, and late November, both of which, <laughs> you're not going to like this. Uh, sorry, actually not both of which, but the last one was a corrective rally, actually, from about 45 all the way to 52. You know, a very impressive rally, no doubt, no doubt about that, but but uh, but not necessarily like it, so to speak. Um, 
anyways, uh, for what it's worth, yeah, I do think that this one continues onwards from here over the next couple weeks. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so now let's talk about reasons that I'd be still kind of skeptical more long term where those price pivots are at and where I would switch on to full on long term macro bullish. For right now, I'm just, you know, I'm looking for continuation. I'm open to a macro pivot to the bullish side, but uh, I do think that there are reasons to be a little bit subdued in the excitement of this. Oh, I also forgot to mention, you know, this over here on the daily. Daily MACD, MACD is nuts to the upside, and daily uh, PMAR is actually playing off the same areas that we've seen some major bottoms come in as well, just for what it's worth, but I don't want to get into that right now. What I want to talk about is a little bit more on the long-term skepticism side, which is the monthly MACD, uh, sorry, the month of MACD, of which we did see it cross the downside officially coming into this month of February for the first time basically since uh, February of 2020, and that was one month before, you know what, to the old flu dump a um, And it's really only happened a few times in Bitcoin's history, as denoted by these green vertical lines three times before this current one. This was a bull trap in 2014, this was a bull trap in 2018, and this was just a catastrophic meltdown in 2019, uh, in 2020. So, uh, and also what's rather interesting about this is that it's still playing off the same areas as well. You can see Bitcoin test down to the 20 simple alongside that uh, metric, you know, still spends about a few months bouncing around, but the bull trap inevitably, inevitably happens and brings Bitcoin all the way back down to the 55 right here. Same thing right here, bounce off the 55, down to the 50, or sorry, bounce off the 20, down to the 55, bounce off the 20, down to the 55. And currently we are bouncing off the 20. You know, can this take a few more months? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, the second that we do see, you know, the nine cross the downside of the 20, very likely to get that move down to the 55, historically speaking, has been very much relevant. But for right now, you know, direction's up and uh, or at least I think direction's up and I don't really have a reason to be, you know, bearish, at least for the time being, especially as long as Bitcoin's above 39. Um, also, on our monthly stochastic momentum, we do see, you know, it's still angled to the down, it's actually angled to the downside for the first time basically since, I mean, we saw it all the way down over here, but from this area from the first time since uh, February 2018, which was obviously a bull trap, and February 2014, which was also a bull trap, and it will be remaining with downside momentum as long as below 54,350. So even if Bitcoin did come up to the proverbial uh, bull trappy area that I'm t that I'm that I'm talking about at 50,000 bucks, it'd actually still be below that pivot. Now, obviously, that pivot will move down coming into March. But uh, you know, it's just it's just something to monitor. I don't think it's relevant right now. However. And then the other thing, yeah, so this one is obviously not a concern like this moment as well, but I do think that it could come into play uh, later on down the road, and that is the global open interest. So we did see global open interest move to the upside with this move again. How you? Oh, short squeeze, huh? Short squeeze, but open interest went up. That's weird. That's weird. So the, so the shorts, they got squeezed and they put on longs, right? <laughs> what the fuck, man? Um, <laughs> sorry, I can't help myself. Uh, anyways, anyways, um, so here is something that I, here's like a concerning thing that could possibly happen in the future. If we do see open interest get above about 13, especially 14 billion, um, plus a lower high, especially below 45, but, but even below 50, I'd say as well, if we see something like that, that has been the signature for big uh, pullbacks, aka crashes in the past at minimum 20 to 25 percent at maximum, you know, kind of what we saw over here and over here for like 50 percent. Um, so uh, so for right now, you know, it's it's at around 11 and a half billion. It's not anything super concerning. But let's say that Bitcoin were to get like some like this, right? Uh, kind of giving my way, my hand away and then showed some weakness right there and turned down and you saw open interest, you know, get above that. Let's just call it 13 and a half billion pivot. Um, and then, and then Bitcoin comes down and then specifically cracks back below about 40,000 bucks on a daily closure. That's the point where I'd really start to say, hey, this this is the macro bearish route. Bitcoin's very likely coming back down to the long-term macro base. And um, you know, I, I do think worst case scenario is down to the 55, which is probably like 25,000 bucks around that time. There will be stops along the way, obviously, but this is very far away. The hopium, uh, and also as relevant to happen as well until you know we get full on confirmation of this would be some sort of a higher low above that $40,000 region and then specifically getting back above the $50,000 region right here on a, on a daily closure. At that point, I would feel very comfortable and confident targeting moves up, you know, basically to 60,000 bucks and probably beyond over time. 
Um, so I do think that that is uh, relevant to speak about because that's essentially where I'd go full on macro bull until then, you know, some macro consolidation with short term, medium or very, very short term, probably a bit of pullback, medium and, and, and higher term time frames, probably continuation and then macro, you know, we'll probably figure that out into maybe later this month, probably March, I'd imagine. Anyways, I think that's a good place to leave off this video. Uh, I think it's a good time for this. Um, Hopefully I got everything within this one. Uh, I want to wish you well. T perhaps tomorrow we'll do a live stream. I haven't really decided yet. Um, again, it's going to depend on the internet quality and connection here. But uh, if we can do it, we probably will do it. If not, then just another, uh, you know, I don't know, five to ten minute uh, long uploaded video. Really appreciate the feedback on that. And um, cool. Yeah, I'll be signing off now. Take care. Have a nice Sunday. And see you hopefully very soon.